Hey everybody. You know, there's literally thousands of videos out there on YouTube and other places, see them, documentaries and everything, about the Tehachapi Be Loop. Uh, see a lot of trains on it, uh, you heard this and that about it, but one of the things I've never seen about it is the uh, facts about why it exists and why they put it here and uh, what its uh, function was rather than going some other route. Well, I'll talk about that a little bit. And uh, one of the myths about the loop that I would like to dispel right here and now is that uh, William Hood, who was the chief engineer for Southern Pacific Railroad, and they surveyed this line, who uh, figured this out and designed it, is that he watched uh, some boy following his mule to the top of this hill behind me there, right over my shoulder with the cross on it. Uh, that is not true. William Hood was a civil engineer and uh, a very good one. He laid out a lot of railroads and he understood what it took to make things work. And it just made sense to wrap the rails around this hill and gain some elevation in a short distance by using the circumference of that hill. Worked out just right. And uh, the loop gains 77 feet of elevation and about a little over 4,000 feet. And the from the time it goes through Tunnel 9 and then crosses back over itself, uh, and that's right behind me here. It was considered one of the marvels of 19th century engineering. Uh, there are other loops. Hey, we're going to get to see a train come around this thing. But there are other loops in America and other places in the world, but they don't work like this one, most of them. Uh, there aren't a lot of them, but most of them don't cross over themselves where the, in the length that the train would actually be able to cross over itself. But uh, this one does, and it was certainly the first one to use that kind of civil engineering. But anyway, uh, so I go through a couple of the reasons why this does exist and why it works so well. And here is a picture of the loop in 1876, with two trains on it before trains were long enough to cross over themselves. Okay, this is the approach to the loop. You can see that curve going around that hill there. That is another one of the 180s on the hill. I have uh, videos up on my channel of all the 180s on the mountain, and the one down below this is... Uh, east of Woodford and it is the one that comes around and goes under here and that is the uh, east portal of Tunnel Line and the facing signals for the west end of Waylong or the north end of Waylong, if you must, if you're a Union Pacific person. Goes around the hill there, and you can see how it gains the elevation, comes by here, and continues around there, over to, you can see the uh, portal of Tunnel 10 and the cut alongside. Uh, that little cut right there is, that is where the east end of Waylong used to be, or the south end, when they came through a few years ago, created double track from Waylong to Marcel. The uh, original main line that goes through Tunnel 10 is now track one, and the one that comes through the cut that they created is track two. But you can see the elevation even from where we're standing, it probably gains another I don't know, probably another 50 or 60 feet between here and there. I don't have my transit in my back pocket, so I can't check that out for you and verify that, but that's about what it looks like. But uh, anyway, that is what it looks like from here. We'll move up the other side. And uh, something else I'd like to say before we get over there and start looking at the loop is that if I had a mule 
that walked around that hill in a spiral fashion just to get to the top of it, I'd shoot that mule. And if my kid was following him, I'd have to ask him, why didn't you just walk up the hill? It's really not that steep. Okay, enough comedy. On with the loop. Okay, uh, moved up to the top end of the loop and we were shooting from right over there a minute ago. And now we are down here. You can see really, there's tunnel nine down there in that cut. That's where the loop technically starts. Uh, the switch for the what was the siding at Waylong is down there. The signals, the facing signals. And anyway, um, you can see how much that climbs going around there. And over there is Highway 58. Now, when they originally came up here and started these surveys, they actually surveyed a route. If you can look uh, way down there, you can see that little section of track down there below the, below the freeway. That's about where I shot that video that I will link from uh, near the uh, fourth crossing of the Tashby Creek. But anyway, they surveyed a route about where uh, that curve is where I shot that and rather than making the horseshoe back towards the loop they surveyed that route along the north wall of Tehachapi, of Tehachapi Creek Canyon into uh, where Cable is today. They could have kept pretty much the same grade it would have been a little steeper but the problem with that is that, that it would have required, I can't remember exactly how many, it was going to require like 11 trestles and culverts just between here and Tehachapi, which is only a few miles. And it would have uh, necessitated a lot of excavation work, a lot of cuts other than those tunnels and fills. And coming up this way was just a heck of a lot easier. And there you can see Tunnel 10. And here you can see Tunnel 10 while it was under construction in 1875. And the cut that is the new number two track. Anyway, so there's a little explanation of why this exists. When you're down at Woodford and looking up this way, you can see that other than the little gap up the canyon over there this is just a pretty much a wall of hills and uh, the hill that the loop is on and that one over there all are part of that wall and I think that uh, engineering this around this hill and locating this in their survey was uh, was really cool uh, they did all this stuff without drones, computers, or anything else. This was all surveyed on horseback. I don't even remember how long it took. I read it somewhere. But anyway, sorry for the wind noise. I'm using my mic, but it's still pretty windy up here today and cold. But anyway, uh, that is the reason the loop is here. I hear another train coming up, so I will uh, shoot a little of it when it gets here. All right, we're gonna shoot this whole train and shoot it until the head end comes by. Wish he would have come by while we were over on the other side. That would have really given you a better idea of the elevation to here because you can really see it better from over there than you can from here. It almost looks like we're level with the other side from here, but, but we're not. We're said probably 50 feet higher. This is a BNSF. Chugging on up, double stack container train. branch right there at the bottom down there
see the end of the train or the not even see the end of it yet down there below highway 58 that is the same train down there is where I shot the video that I will link below in the uh, comments and there is the end of it. it's got a couple of drone pushers on the back the head end coming out from behind the hill. Again, Bear Mountain in the background there gets a star in one of my videos, blowing his horn for the uh, crossing over there that's the entrance to the Loop Ranch. Harsh light, it's starting to get a little late in the afternoon. Good old winter sunshine right in your eyes. But it sure does make for pretty skies and clouds. Hills are greening up. And right there where he is right now is where the old switch the end of Waylong for the siding there was the uh, east switch of Waylong or the south switch if you're a UP person. Tunnel 10 on the number one track. All right. That is a train gaining his elevation from all the way down there around the loop. All right. I thought I would come down here and kind of give everyone an idea of what the original surveyors would have seen as they came out of the canyon down that way that is looking I mean, we're still at Woodford but that's looking down towards Keene where Tatchby Creek came up out of the uh, canyon there and they would have been pretty much right on these hills obviously this was all still a hill here this wasn't the railroad nothing was here <clears throat> and uh Looking that way, you can see there's really nothing but hills. That cut there where the freeway is obviously wasn't there. There were just hills. This whole thing, they came up here and they were just looking at, at bulk of hills up there. Now, right, now just to the right of that tree, you'll see better, you can see the cut in the side of that hill. That is actually the loop. Uh, and as I said when we were up above, they surveyed a, a grade on the uh, other side of the canyon to the left there, but that's the one that was going to involve a whole lot of work. So you can see why the loop made sense. And had nothing to do with the boy and his mule. And I would also like to add that the final decision 
on the route they were going to use to get from here to Tehachapi was not finalized until 1875 when the uh, railhead was down at Caliente and uh, they came through here in uh, early 1876 is when they got here but that decision wasn't made until a few months prior to that so uh, I always thought that was pretty interesting too. All right well that will conclude my little history lesson of the loop and a little shot of a light engine and a whole train coming around it. Uh, if you didn't know some of this stuff, I hope you learned it. If you did already know it, I hope you don't think I'm being a know-it-all. And if there are any other historic uh, facts about the uh, loop or any myths that you uh, want to dispel, leave them in comments below. And as usual, if you have any ideas for future videos or things you'd like to see, let me know. And I'll see what I can do about that. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you all later.